guys, so we're going to do our, um, we'll look at our trinket dishes from the Sophie and Toffee box. We've got the lovely shell. Which is gorgeous. And then for the shell, I'm torn because I'm tempted to do it clear sides and then do some of these blues and greens alcohol inks on the back. But that is what everyone has been doing. That's what was on the Sophie and Toffee um, videos. So I don't want to copy them because I'm already copying them with the the, 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 put my teeth in, try and speak normally, the marble. Um, so what I'm going to try and do with this is an idea that I've been playing with for a little while in my head. So we're going to try and see if we can make this work. So I have got some translucent pigments from Resinate. So I have light blue, I have dark blue, and I have this apple green. Now I'm going to use a little bit of that. But I had a thought, so I see a lot of people make shells, like, not make shells, get big shells like these, actually from the beach or wherever. And then they fill it with water and sand. So my thought was, can I make a trinket dish that has the sand in it? So I have some sand that I purchased from Resinate. All of these links I'll put down below for you. So I'm going to mix my sand into the resin and actually have the sand as part of the trinket tray. I have no idea if this is going to work. I'm hoping it's going to work. We're going to try it together. So. In the box, it does say that this takes 50 grams of resin, which is 50 mils. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get everything mixed up and ready. I'm going to mix up 60 because that is easier to measure for um, me on these pots. And it gives me a little bit of extra leeway to figure out where I need some more. And I might need some clear to add things in. So that's going to be fine. Um, yeah, I'm quite excited about this. Let's get on. Okie dokie, so I've mixed up my resin in my silicon cup and I've touched it a little bit with a torch because I want to pop some of those bubbles but I don't want the torch anywhere near my mould. So I've split this into those three smaller cups. Two of them are full, um, which are going to have the blues in and one of them only has a little bit which is going to have the green. And then I've got a spare cup for some clear. Into that larger mixing cup, I'm going to add the sand, and this sand from Resin 8 is absolutely gorgeous. It's got a whole sort of range of colour particles in it, it's absolutely stunning, and it's really fine. So I know it's going to not cause problems with the mould. So I'm going to mix that up, and from watching people um, who work with sand quite a lot, um, I do know that it's a bit of a bugger for bubbles. So I'm going to mix it, and I'm going to leave it to sit for a minute. Then I'm going to use toothpicks to get this transparent colour in. So we've got the light blue and the darker blue in the larger quantity of resin and then that green in a very small quantity um, because I wanted some green touches in there but I didn't want it to take over. So there's our green, it's unfortunately a very light green, I would have liked a bit darker but it worked in the end. Then we've got our light blue which probably is a little bit too dark, I probably had a little bit too much pigment in there but you know, you live and you learn. Um, and then in the other one we've got our dark blue, which is actually a lot darker. The camera doesn't pick up the colour difference quite as much in this scene, but it is a lot darker than the light blue. So give those a full mix in, and then I'm going to leave them set for a second while... <laughs> there you go, there's me popping some of the bubbles because that sand is, is difficult. So trying to get this into the mould was actually trickier than I had thought. Um... I was expecting it kind of just to flow in and stay where I'd planned. Um, so I propped it up, hoping to keep it all down one end, and then realised that actually the lip is only a small lip, so it wouldn't do exactly what I wanted it to do. So I poured a load of it down the outside there. I'm just going to wipe that off so it's a lot less slippery. Then just going to pull it apart ever so slightly to make sure the sand is in that bottom section. Um, and then add our colours in. So we start with our dark blue right at the sort of point of the shell. I'm um, just going to move some of that sand back down. Um, 
<coughs> so we're going to add our dark blue right at the top. So I'm lifting out the sides to make sure it goes down. Then we're going to add our light blue in the middle. So down each side I was hoping for, but the sand had got there first. Down that side worked. Um, this 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 was a messy project. Um, probably should have planned it beforehand. I went through, I think, five pairs of gloves on this project. I think there's me going to change my gloves, so I'm gone to a, into a new pair of gloves already. I think this is pair three, maybe? Not sure. Um, so, yeah, added some of that colour in. You can see on the back that there's that dribble of blue over the sand, but actually, once um, you turn it around and see the front, you can't tell, so that's fine. So, mixing the sand up again, adding some more sand in to give us a proper beach. And then adding the rest of our colours in, dark blue at the back, then some patches of green. I'm just doing a few dots here and there because um, I'm going to mix it all together with the toothpick so that the green is visible but it's not, you know, a big blob of green. Um, and then the rest of the blue. And then <clears throat> make sure that everything is, is vaguely where I wanted it. Um, so I'm going to mix those blues together so that it looks a bit more natural. Um, and then trying to decide what to do. Is this another set of gloves? Oh no, this is where I found this little, um, it's a crystal mould. But I thought it'd be really nice to stand up in this dish as a sort of ring holder. So that pot I had of clear, I'm just splitting that between the three colours so that I can um, have some colour to go in, not just the sand. It didn't work out the way I'd planned, so now I'm kind of regretting having any colour in there at all. I probably should have just done the whole crystal segment in sand. Um, because it didn't quite work the way that I wanted it to. But, saying that, I do still like the finished result. So, you know, you live and you learn. So I started off with adding some sand in to the pointed end of the crystal. So I've popped that in and I'm going to use... Um, one of my little pokey tools to just get it down right down to the point so we haven't got anything missing so I pushed that all the way down added some more sand in and the plan was to have sand at the pointed end and the blues at the other end so it looked like it was a rock coming out of the water um, but again when I propped it up all the sand started to fall out so I had to sort of I propped it up against the shell to start with poured some of the blues in and then I had to lay it flat because it was just overflowing the edge. <clears throat> so it didn't quite go to plan. But I did manage to get both blues and the green in there with the sand. And I think it was actually a really nice design. If I was going to do it again, I would put sand in the pointed end. And prop it up as much as I could without it spilling. And let that cure before adding the blues. So that I could make sure the sand was at that end. But again, I'd do that with the shell as well. If I was doing it again, I would just do the sand and let that cure on its own. So, you know, you live, you learn. Seriously, look at the mess! Look at the mess! Oh, here you go. It's, it is actually quite a lot. So it's eye of you and toe of frog, wool of bat and tongue of dog, adder's fork and blind worm sting, lizard's leg and owlet's wing, for a charm of powerful trouble like a hell broth boil and bubble. Double top, double double toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. That's the bit that everyone knows. Those yeah. Okie dokie, we are going to demold our shell beach themed piece. Now I didn't mention this beforehand, but where I had some resin left over, I decided to um, create this. Now, this one I want to use myself. I'm really looking forward to using this as like a jewellery tray. And so I wanted something to stand up that I can put my rings on. And I was thinking lots of different things. And then I remembered this mould had arrived. In fact, the day that I poured this. I'm um, like, perfect timing. And I thought, ooh, that'd be nice. Because I can make it with the same colours, with the sand and the sea. And make it appear like a rock. Um, it didn't quite go to plan. Because I was hoping to keep the sand on the bottom half. On the top half, sorry. So I was filling it at this angle. Um, so that it would look like it was sand on top and water underneath. But it didn't quite work that way. Because obviously when it settled, the sand was a lot heavier than the resin with just the pigment in. But do you know what? I still like it and I still think it can work. 
it just might be on a side angle like that where it's yeah I'll figure it out so we'll get this little baby out first this is not going to be easy with the gloves on there we go once you get it started it all comes out quite easily a little bit of sticky sand I have to be honest though I was a little nervous about using the sand like this because I've seen people use sand in resin quite a lot but I've not ever seen them use it in a silicon mold and I was kind of worried it would like either break down the silicon or um not come out of the mold but it's come out absolutely beautifully look at that oh, one little air bubble but that's fixable I need to clean up that back edge actually that's peeling off quite easily or just with my fingers this is the the thing if you demold at the right point then clearing up flashing like this is very easy I mean this is just my nail through a glove is taking off that excess overflow I don't have to worry about getting scissors involved I don't have to heat up my blade I mean that will need a little bit of a sand but that is oh, I love the colors as well and where the sand has I mean sand emits bubbles forever I was coming back and popping bubbles on this forever and you can still see the sheer amount of bubbles on the back um sand is a bit of a a pain for releasing bubbles so actually all of this is very cloudy and full of bubbles but I think that actually works in my favor for what I want so I'm really excited about this let's pop this out and see how our beach trinket dish looks I did get quite a lot of overspill when I was doing the sand so the mould itself is very messy but again everything pops out really neatly and nicely and oh look at those colour oh. okay I'm deeply in love with this dish oh yes <laughs> I love I love it and then this, I was thinking, standing somewhere like this. Originally, I was going to do a big stand up, but I might now sort of do it on an angle. Some description, because I'm going to pour some carefully so that I don't lose all of this texture. I'm going to pour some white in there to do some waves. And it's as if, like, I was meant to make this. Because as I said, this mould arrived yesterday when I poured. And today, I got my delivery of my tiny starfish can you see them with that okay there we go and some tiny shells because i have some shells but they're not this tiny which i'm gonna add in along here so yes the next part of this one is going to be mixing up some clear and some white to do a little bit literally i'm gonna do one wave because i don't want to lose all the texture add in starfish shells and our um sort of ring edge and we're fine I'm not going to edge the edge of this one um I know we did get the um the edging the gilding paint or whatever it was called in the box but I'm not going to for this one because I love that texture and the look of that sand all oh, the different I love that it's still quite translucent as well <laughs> um <laughs> I'm such a child aren't I um it's a lovely base that is really nice and smooth I'm going to give it a slight sand because where there were sand granules around the edge, um, it's got a bit of a sharp edge that I wouldn't want it to um, damage the surface. But other than that, I think this is absolutely stunning. Oh, so excited. Oh, so I was just tidying up the, um, the mould. And what I discovered is this. This is not a big air bubble. The mould actually comes with a pin to make a hole now it doesn't go all the way through or even close so it's really hard to to see so it's up to where my finger is if i'm pointing at the end of it you've still got you know a good quarter of an inch there so i'm not entirely sure the purpose of that because i mean i suppose it is just a starting point and you can drill through the other side maybe um yeah, that's an interesting one. I just thought I'd point that out because I hadn't spotted it on the mould. Okie dokie. So, we are going to um, do our top layer now. Now, <laughs> this camera would not focus. It's so frustrating. 
Um, and I was speaking during this part, but there we go. Um, so this is the resin eight opaque white, which is absolutely fantastic for sales and lacing. And I got these spoons, which go from one mil up to 15 mils, which means it's really useful for mixing up smaller quantities of resin. So I mixed up two mils, so one mil of resin, one mil of hardener, um, mixing that together in this small silicon cup, and I'm gonna split it into two. I'm gonna pour a little bit into the other cup and add some of the white pigment. Now, unfortunately, I have to add a little bit more than I'm gonna need because otherwise there's too much pigment and it wouldn't set because you have to get the right percentage. If you put too much pigment in or um, especially liquid pigments, this one isn't too bad because it's a paste, but it still can affect the curing. So I've put a little bit in there and then I've kept some clear and I'm gonna add some of that gorgeous opaque white to it. And oh, this stuff is incredible. I'm gonna have to do another big beach scene soon because this stuff just makes the most incredible waves. <gasps> Love it. Anyway, so I've mixed in some white into that smaller cup. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour some clear into the trinket tray, just along sort of roughly following the curve and the edge of the water. And then above that, we're gonna pop in the white. Um, and I did use my stick to help just spread it slightly. And then unfortunately, because my uh, extension heat hasn't arrived yet, I did have to do the uh, the hairdryer heat gun blowing of the resin off camera. So I've blown it there. You can see the waves. It's softened that resin quite a lot, so it flows easily. So it's in the right position. Now I'm trying to decide where to put this uh, crystal for my rings. But we're just going to spread that white out so we've got some nice different textures in there. We want some big cells and some small cells. And then we're going to um, add a little bit more clear just inside the grooves because what I was really conscious of was that I was going to lose all of that texture inside the shell and I didn't want that. So I picked out a few shells from the bag that had arrived. These are so cute, they're so tiny, so fiddly. Um, so I had two different bags with different sizes in. So I've got three of the smaller ones. And then when I finally got into it, because it had two layers, um, one of the larger ones. Two of the larger ones? Two of the larger ones. That that was fiddly with gloves on. And then I got out two of these absolutely gorgeous, tiny little starfish to go in the dish. So we'll start with the starfish. So we're going to put one in upside down and one in the right way up. So you can see both sides of it. And then we're going to start adding our shells, which were not playing ball and letting me pick them up with my tweezers. Um, so I've got them in there eventually. I think we ended up with a shell on the end, one over the other side, and a third shell, I believe. I don't think I put any more than three on because we've still got to get that crystal on and it was getting a bit cramped. So got two starfish, got the three shells, and I'm just spreading them out a little bit, adding some more clear, ready to put our crystal on. Now, I did say originally I was going to try and do it at an angle, but in the end, I decided to go straight up with it so that the rings can sit on it. Okay, so we are back and I'm really, really excited to share this one with you. I'm actually a little bit, I'm lying, I'm a lot a bit in love with this. So here is my finished shell trinket. I mean, I love, absolutely love it. So I did add some white waves in, but I have still got, you can hear. So I have still got the ridges still and around the top. So it still looks like a shell. Um, I've added in a couple of the starfish, one each way up, and then a few shells. And then I've added this, which is going to be holding my rings. And I did fill in the hole. You can see it when the light hits it. It's not a complimentary angle. There we go. You can see it when the light hits it, but actually in person you can't really notice it. So, yeah, I'm really excited. This one is going up on my dressing table to hold my rings. Um... I wanted something to hold them to look nice because I've got three rings that I've worn. So I have um, my dad's wedding ring. He passed when I was 12 and he gave me, a little while before he died, um, his wedding ring. Um, which he'd had made smaller and he wore on his little finger um, to keep the connection with me when he got divorced from the incubator. Um... And it fit me on this finger. And I've worn that every day since then. 
the only time I took it off was for an operation and I was so worried about it that I actually <laughs> stood up in recovery still attached to all the monitors and a catheter because I wanted my ring back and I basically had a sort of mass hysteria fit until they found Daryl and got my ring back um, that was god that was a few years ago that was when I had my appendix out and I've worn it every day and it, I hate I hate not having it on I also have um, my ring that has my pentagram on it and that I bought when I was 15 or 16 and I've worn every day since and then uh, nearly two years ago now well a year and a half ago should we say um, I got engaged and so I was wearing my engagement ring for about six months I don't think it was even six months before my hands got really bad and then I was wearing it occasionally when it fit and now I maybe get five minutes at the end of each day where I can put my rings on and wear them I'm hoping this new medication will uh, adapt that but we'll see so I wanted something special to keep them on and sort of properly display them so I can pop um, my other jewellery in here I've got a necklace that Daryl bought me that I love um, but yeah so um, this is going to go up on my chest drawers or maybe my bedside table I'm not sure which yet so I'll put in a picture of it in use but yeah I'm so excited these moulds are absolutely gorgeous to work with and considering that I've not seen anyone make a trinket dish out of a beach with the sand as part of the trinket I'm quite excited my only it's not even a dislike my only negative from it is how translucent this bit of the sand is because obviously this is where the sand has sunk is absolutely beautiful and really opaque same here but this bit is quite translucent and I don't know a way that we can fix that really without letting the resin get really thick and adding tons and tons of sand and pouring it in uh, yeah I will, I will in investigate over time. I might even film some of my uh, investigations. But yeah, so this is my uh, my shell trinket tray. I hope that um, you've enjoyed this and you've learned something. Any questions, as always, put them below. I will put a couple of links below so that you can uh, snag yourself a discount with Sophie and Toffee if you would like to. Um, and yes, thank you very much for spending time with me today. It's always a privilege, especially in this difficult time. I hope that you are keeping well and you are keeping entertained and that your loved ones are safe and well too. So yeah, thank you very much for spending time with me today. I'll see you on the next one. Keep crafting. Bye.